Hello and welcome to. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at how to install Bootstrap 4. So this version is going to be the alpha. It is almost out, but as always with alpha, it is not final, so keep in mind that things may change. However, it shouldn't stop you from playing around with it, because there's a lot of new features that probably will stay, and you can get a good idea about what's going on in version 4. It, as I said, it's providing a lot of new features and I'll be going over that in another tutorial. So in this one, we're going to be looking at how to get started with it. So let's just jump into it. On my desktop here, you can see that I got a few folders and we're going to look at how to get Bootstrap by first going into the browser. And if you go to version 4 and alpha and get Bootstrap, you should be taken to this page. I'll leave a link in the description. So you can click download here. We'll take you to the download page, and there's a load of ways to get it. So, quite a few package managers to use. You can either do it with Node, for example, or you can do it with Boa, or you could, for example, also just download it here. It's worth noting that because it's still in an alpha state, it's also using all these extra components. So. Obviously, it will be using things like uh, auto prefixes, which you probably should be using yourself to save you a lot of time. If you don't know what auto prefixer is, I will go over it in another tutorial. However, just to explain what quickly is, it's basically saving you a lot of time by prefixing things in your CSS instead of having to say WebKit this, WebKit that to target different browsers. So it saves you time, and you should definitely be using it. So. You're also going to need the SAS compiler if you're going to get the source files here. One thing about Booster 4 is it's no longer using this, it's all SAS now. So if you're not familiar with SAS, we go over that in our tutorials as well. And yes, you need a SAS compiler as a few examples of that, and I will show you that as well, where you can use that. However, in this tutorial, let's just focus on getting started. So the quickest and easiest way you probably can get started with is just using the CDN. So if I think it's if we go to getting started here, you will notice here that these links are taking you to the CDN. So what does it mean? Well, it means that you don't have to have a physical file on your machine to do it. So we could go down here with the starter template, and you see we get a jQuery here, and we get Tether, and we get Bootstrap, a minimized version of it. So and we should also have a style sheet up here. All right. So I've taken it into the folder here just to show you so if you just copy that so you can just click the copy up here and then you can create your HTML file I uh, just create a quick one in here and I'm just gonna open that with brackets just to demonstrate what we mean here so in here as I said you got your bootstrap CSS there to the CDN and you got your JavaScript down in the bottom here in between here I've just created it a basic container and this is pretty much similar to how it was in version 3 so don't worry about that we're not showing you the new features in this tutorial but as you see we got two columns here huh? so if I run this one we should see that these things should actually be laid out in two columns just to demonstrate that this is actually working and there we go so we've got two columns so that's the probably the easiest way to get started with Bootstrap 4 so the other way would be uh, to use one of the package managers so let's just try that. So if I go to my command prompt, that one there. So I want to go to my desktop. So on my desktop, I then want to get, let's see, get started. Let's put it in a get started folder. So if we put it on that directory here, and if you don't know how to navigate, uh, command prompt, I got a tutorial on that as well, so just go check out my tutorials. So, if you want to do oh, let's just go to download, and then you see this path down here. That, there we are. So, if you copy that path there, just copy that, and then you can right click in here, and you should get it. So, if I Excuse me, I got that very bit here. That's so now. So it's just take a little bit of time, and you will see we contacting in GitHub and retrieving the files for you. So just give it a bit of time. Got Taylor, got jQuery. All right. So if I go back to my desktop here, 
and we then go to get started with. We now have our Boa component. You notice that in a file before we had a jQuery file, so it's obviously got an F1 for you. So you want to look in your dist folder, and we got your minified version here, and we got a non-minified version there. So that's your jQuery. You can use the CDN as well. You also have a bootstrap folder, and in there, got dist again, and then we've got CSS, and we've got a bootstrap min there. So that's the one you want. You cascade into the file key, and then you've got your JS, and you've got bootstrap min there. You also have tether, but just pretty go. Cool. If you don't know what's going on here, it can seem very daunting at first, but don't worry about it. These are just the files in here you need, as I just pointed out. So once you need, basically what you have going on in here is it's just because the project is built with Grunt, and Grunt is just running and sort of doing that work behind. So when it's written in SAS, it's just compiling it into your disk folder here, here and that's the result. So you have all the other files, which is basically just working your SAS. So you can see here, this is all your SAS components. So don't worry about that, just get those files, and I've already done that in another folder over here. So that, so I created this version here. So we open that one. So we have a, this file now. So just to demonstrate what we want to do is, you want to go in here, and you can get your jQuery. Just get your jQuery in. Let's go out again here, and um, we're just going to create a directory called JS here. Like that. And then we want to create another one called CSS. And then go in and get it in bootstrap there. Get that one. Just pop that into your CSS. And then the last, we just go in and test here and then get a minified bootstrap there. Alright, let's go back there. And then we just need tether. Put that in here, and we should have a distal in there as well. And like that. Just grab that one. And then go back there and put that in. So we can then go into our index file here and you then have it up here your CSS styles here so that's the path to the CDN so we can then uh, replace that with uh, the files we just got ourselves here so do that just take that path and I think we called the CSS didn't we and we've got that one there so CSS bootstrap and min dot CSS yeah so down here we then have our jQuery path so you can either use the CDN or you can use your own version of it. So we're going to go to JS and we can go to the jQuery min and then we've got Tiller down here. Just be the same. Like that. Tiller. And we don't need the integrity and we don't need the cross region. Get rid of that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Move that. And then the last one, but not least, is our bootstrap. Go to JS. Bootstrap men. So, just move that as well. And obviously, you can close these up otherwise. So, if I run this now, we should see very similar as before. We should have a working version of bootstrap running here. So, just go that. And I have made a mistake. Just give me a second here. See what we've done here. CSS bootstrap blah blah blah. So it hasn't blocked it from the cross region. Okay. Don't worry about that. Let's go up in again. You see that one up here? So let's take that one up. And there we are. So that's the way you can uh, get Bootstrap. So obviously you can get it with Node and various other ways, ways you want to do that. 
So I think that's everything for installing Bootstrap 4 here. So you had a quick and easy way with the CDN and you have the package manager. However, with the package manager, you are getting a lot of extra files and you just need to dig a bit around and you can get the compiled versions of the files you need. What you may have noticed also all the other uncompiled versions of the files as well, like the few components we were looking at just with the JavaScript versions. What you may have noticed or thought about is, uh, well, you can actually turn off the on these components and that is really where some of the strengths lies because you bootstrap does offer it on the website where you can sort of say I want this and that but once you have downloaded it you can pretty much just uncomment and comment whatever you want in and out uh, in and out of your project so it's very quick and easy to say for example I don't want the button style and you just comment that out and you're not gonna have the button styles in and you compile a CSS file in here and it's gonna be considerably small so we're going to be looking at how to do that in uh, one of the next tutorials here. And we're also going to be going over what is new in Bootstrap 4 compared to Bootstrap 3. So hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and don't forget to just like and subscribe. And go play around with Bootstrap 4. It's definitely something worth uh, playing with and it's something worth learning because it's as Bootstrap 3. Probably going to be quite industry standard to be working with this. So enjoy.